Welcome back to the channel everybody, I'm Dino. And for today's episode, we're actually in the basement of my house in my woodworking shop to bring you an update on our 3D printed dash. So why don't you sit back, grab yourself something warm to drink, and enjoy Dino's Tinker Shed. I can't wait to tell you what I've been working on. I'll see you in a minute. When I started building this 3D printed dash for my Suzuki DR650 about six weeks ago, I knew that it was going to take some work and more importantly, it's going to take some time to learn the CAD programs and the 3D printer and really refine the print to a point that I'm satisfied with it. And that's indeed what's happening here. And this is why it's taking me some time to get these videos out and show you where I am, but I do have a bit of an update today. The way I see this video series going is as I get closer to refining each individual panel of the print, I'll bring you up to speed on what that panel is looking like so I can get some feedback from you out there to see what your thoughts are and if you see something that I'm missing as I print it. And I'll give you some rationale as to why I'm printing it the way I am. The first question that I get asked quite often is why are you printing it as panels and not a one piece print? And there's a couple reasons for that. The print itself as it sits is a total of seven different panels if you include the dashboard panel itself that's in black here, the others are in white. Now I can combine these in Tinkercad and print it out as a one piece unit. I can do that at the end. But for the sake of refining each individual panel's details, to me it makes a lot more sense to print them in panel form, refine the different characteristics of each panel, and then fit it back into the overall print structure to make sure there's no interference and make sure that everything fits correctly before I have to print an entire dash every single time. So it saves a bit of money, it makes the changes a little faster, and it also helps me to sort of visualize a single panel at a time and work on that and focus on that instead of the overall print. The other thing I like about printing it in panels is if I choose to stay with that for final form, the panels are printed flat, they're almost like plywood with dissecting lines of filament reinforcing the outside structure of the print instead of printing it like bricks going straight up and down. I do have some thought that in the end, if I can glue these together and make those glue joints strong enough, there's going to be more shear strength printed flat like that than if I was to print it standing up this way. But those are bridges we're going to cross later on. For now, we're just going to focus on design changes. And today, we're going to focus on the front panel right here. I've been working quite a bit on that and I want to bring you up to speed on where we are. This front panel is quite an important aspect of the overall print because this is going to house our fuse panel and our relay that we looked at in the last video. In the original print, I just drilled holes and fastened the relay and the fuse panel directly to this plate. And although it worked functionally in the aluminum, I really wanted to make this a little cleaner looking. The other challenge that I had is the first primary print in black PLA that I did was very similar to this white one here. It had a five millimeter thick panel in general, and then it had this triangular shaped um, top of it. And what that would do is fit up against the dashboard and allow an area for me to, to fasten it to. What I found is in the black PLA, after it had sat for a number of months, 
this five millimeter panel, well, it started to warp a little bit. One of the first things I thought was I really should thicken this up, make it 10 mil thick. It'll match the angle here and it should be much stiffer as the torsion box effect of this will stiffen it up. I mean, the infill inside is going to add some stiffness. I also started drawing some lines on here to reference where each individual component would go. So the fuse panel would fit here and I wanted the relay somewhere up around in here. To do this, you use different tools, tape measures, whatnot. I used a set of digital verniers here, which worked out really good. It allowed me to measure centers of holes, things like that, and get a rough idea on this front plate to where I wanted things to sit. Once I found out kind of where I wanted different things to fit, well, I ended up drafting those bolt hole circles for the fuse panel first and printed off a single layer of PLA with those bolt holes in it to get the alignment correct. I didn't want to print an entire print only to find out that the bolt holes weren't correct and of course they weren't the first time. So I kept adjusting that until I got the center of those bolt holes exactly where I wanted it and um, was quite pleased with it. The next thing I did is make sure that I could get that relay to fit where I wanted it to. Now again, originally in the first print, I used this hole in the harness itself to simply pass a bolt through it and bolt it to the back. But I noticed on these relays that we have rail systems on there that allow you to link several relays together and in my case, I designed a mount for these that would allow me to use those rails to cleanly attach it to the backside of the, uh, of the front plate. And you can see that right here. These rails work really good in allowing you to just simply slide in one of these relays. And it's a very, very nice fit. And I even included some hoops here so that you can zip tie all of the loose connected wires to the back of the panel for a nice clean fit. Very, very pleased with what I'm seeing so far. Number three print here has additional loops for more zip ties. And I really wanted to maintain as much of a clean, tidy look as I could inside that compartment bay. So I relieved some of the area so that the fuse panel actually snaps right in like this now. And it fits nice and tight, lines up nice with the bolt holes, and just gives an overall much cleaner, more secure fit while saving a little bit of space underneath the dash itself. So this is really coming together well. Like you see, like I say, I got my rail system here. That's going to allow me to take my relay here and I can slide it in. And it's really starting to look like how I envision it. But there were still a couple things that I wanted to do to finalize this part, at least to a point where I'll start focusing on other things. That I'll show you on print number four. For the most part, Print number four is very, very similar to print number three here. But there is one significant difference that I'm pretty proud of and I want to show you inside the dash here. So let me lift off the cover and we'll take a look inside. That's right. I've got Dino's Tinker Shed logo embossed inside of the dash here. I don't know. I just kind of find it fun to be able to do that. And I think it really does finish off the inside of the dash really well. And that is pretty much a couple weeks worth of work after hours. Not every night, but I'll spend a couple hours every three or four nights working away, printing these off, and then trying them back out. And I hope you're happy with the progress that we're making. Again, if you can, send in some feedback on this style of printing what you think so far of the dash layout inside 
and where you feel I could maybe make some improvements on this panel by panel. The next panels that I'm working on are the side panels here. This original side panel is just a little bit too tight in here with these relief holes. So I've moved a few things around and I'm continuing to work on that project in the evening hours. And I've got some other ideas too, but it's gonna require me to bolt this up to the bike to do that. Now, I've got a couple snowmobile trips booked over the next couple weeks. So my next update might be in a while, but I want you to know I'm working hard on this project for all the DR650 people out there. Even if you don't want to build a 3D dash for your DR650, I hope you find the content kind of interesting. And if you do, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Until then, I hope your weather allows you to get out and do a bit of riding, whether it's on the street, on the dirt, or maybe on the snow. And until you get back here to see me next time, you tinker easy. I gotta get back to work. Bye for now.